so today's actually a pretty chill day we're out here starting on this boat we got a late start on this boat but um, I actually told the customer when we got here today I was like hey if it's cool with you we're gonna actually just take our time on your boat we're actually ahead of schedule we uh, I ended up subbing out another job uh, to another detailer in town so it kind of freed up our schedule so we're just taking this time to enjoy this job we're gonna do a really good job and just relax enjoy this good weather because the last couple weeks we've been running super hard so today we're joking around a little bit we actually got to hop in the truck here in a little bit and do a little bit more admin work but so far we're moving along nice so when you are a mobile detailer inside of my truck here is my office I don't have a shop as of right now we, we are working on that but when you're out and about and you're detailing you got your guys rolling out back you're in the truck this is where I'm doing most of my work at so I'm actually in the process right now of building out a full trailer I went ahead and custom ordered a rock solid trailer and I'm re I'm in the process of building that out currently I'm not using it yet because we're still ordering all the cabinetry and all that for it I'm gonna make a video on us actually building that out it's gonna be pretty cool I'm making that trailer into kind of a mobile workstation not necessarily a traditional detailing trailer so it's gonna be pretty sick. That way I don't have to actually sit in my car any longer when we're on job sites. I'll actually build a little bit of a trailer, in, or I'm sorry, a little bit of a desk inside of the trailer so that I can just work kind of at a desk while we're at the job site. We have um, our buff and shine package on this particular boat that we're working on. It's a full wash. We're, we're washing the boat inside out, clean the compartments, clean the seats, and then we're doing a medium cut compound and then we're gonna polish it and wax this boat. This boat's actually in really good shape. It's just kind of our buff and shine for the season. A lot of people just want a simple buff and shine, so that's why we named it the Buff and Shine Package. Alrighty, so we got our stuff out here on the dock. Here's our Riballo that we're doing. This is a 24 foot Riballo. Again, we're doing our Buff and Shine Package. We got John up here. We already pulled everything out of the boat, so step number one of the detail is to pull everything out of the compartment. So we got our ropes here, we got our cooler here. This was everything in the boat. This customer actually did not have a bunch of junk in their boat, which is super helpful for us detailers. So, so we got John up here. He's gonna start from the front and work his way back and start rinsing out the boat. What, uh, John, what are some tips for, for boat washing? What you got for the people? It's not prepared for that statement really, <laughs> at all. I don't I'll know. put you on the spot. If you, uh, if you work for me, you're going to have a camera shoved in your face quite often. I think it's just kind of like uh, being aware, too. Make sure you have uh, all the compartments recognized, what you're gonna, where you're going to start. Start from the front, get that part clean, and keep coming back so everything runs back. Um, yeah, that's about it. Cool, man. What, uh, what, what soap are we starting out with? Uh, we're using Don Dish soap right now. Uh, we're putting the foam can in and hit it, and then uh, which works great. Scrub it off and rinse it off. Yeah. What'd you say? No. <laughs> John's a pro. John, uh, John's been working for me for about two months now, and uh, well, I guess about three months. And um, he's all officially trained up, and he's actually going to be our lead detailer. We got another guy starting in three weeks and then we'll have another guy starting on our crew in about three to four weeks after that so we're making some big moves out here all right dude i'm gonna go jump in the truck make some phone calls and continue this video and uh i'll just let you out here washing it you, you got any questions as far as what to do yep, all right just remember whenever you're doing the bow here rinse from the bow and then by the when before you get back here just top do the down. yeah top down so cool. front back top down and uh, you got the blue brush, the x off brush? Nope. Yeah, go, 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 yeah, I'll grab it for you. It's really important that you actually have a boat brush when you're washing the boat. <laughs> so right now, until we build out our trailer, we're basically working out the bed of our truck. That's the beautiful thing about the boat detailing business is you don't need a big shop. You actually don't need a big trailer. You can do everything out of the bed of your truck, which is the beautiful thing about this type of business. We got our rigid boxes back here, shop back black totes, everything from Home Depot. And we're gonna be using the blue X-Soft brush to get this boat washed down. All right, I'm gonna go make a few phone calls, dude, and uh, I'll be out here to help you. Appreciate you. Grab a water. Right. Let's get to it. A lot of the times when we are detailing, 
So like today specifically, we were running hard the last, uh, I don't know, two to three weeks. We had a bunch of details lined up. We had a bunch of rain in between. And it's been honestly a crazy couple weeks. I've only been back in Florida for six months now and everything is rolling smooth. This winter was pretty slow. We're coming into the fast season or the heavy season. I'm currently booked out about five to six weeks. Um, based off of uh, business practices, marketing practices, when it comes to marketing, um, I mainly do video Facebook ads specifically in my area. A lot of you guys that try to do ads, you don't actually target the ads properly. I actually see them. You'll have companies in South Florida uh, marketing their detailing business on Instagram and Facebook and they're in South Florida and I'm seeing their ads appear and it's just wasted money. Sure, it gets your name exposure, but if you're not a nationwide company, then it doesn't make sense to do that. So if you're running Facebook ads, make sure you're actually targeting your local area. So that's how I do it. I do very specific target ads on Facebook. I do Google AdWords. I post very, very, very uh, infrequently, so not very often, in local Facebook fishing groups I don't spam it because if you go in those Facebook groups and you start spamming people, you're gonna get kicked out and nobody wants to see that. So maybe once every three or four months. And what I'll also do is just make friends with people in those fishing, fishing groups so that if anyone ever asks about boat detailers, you'll get tagged naturally. That's mainly how I book my jobs. Now, when I do my Facebook ads or my Google ads, it all goes to my website that, we, that I have built, revivalmarinecare.com. When you click on that website, it's going to give you some information about our detailing. We don't really put prices on there because pricing is so customized nowadays. But what we do is we have it to where you click a link, or I'm sorry, you click a form, and when that form pops up, uh, the customer or the client will put in their information to get a free quote. Now when they put in that form, it automatically goes into my CRM system that I'm currently using through RingCheck. It has um, been a cool addition to my business because I've always kind of done this, but I've never had it in an efficient way where it just goes to my email and then I'll call the people and then you know their information kind of gets lost. Well now, what I've been doing in the last couple months that has really changed my business and is the reason why I'm booked out several weeks already is because everything is so organized in this new system that I'm currently using. So I'm actually in the process of hiring an assistant slash office manager that's actually gonna end up taking over all of this. Hopefully she will be on our company here in May and I won't be doing any of this any longer because I know that I'm not the best at running the admin type stuff. So I'm really trying to hire out my weaknesses. One of my weaknesses is calling customers, answering emails. That is definitely one of my weaknesses that I am not the best at. So I've learned in business, hire your weaknesses. Hire out and put the right people in place that are strong in your weaknesses. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, give a few more customers a call, and if no one picks up, which is kind of normal, especially in the middle of a day like today, it's about one o'clock. I usually like to do my phone calls in the morning because people are busy, so um, I did get a little bit of a um, a late start today. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a few more quick phone calls through this system, and if no one answers, then we're just gonna go ahead and hop back out to work, and then we'll try to give some people some calls in the morning. Now, one thing I recommend, if you are new to boat detailing, it is super duper 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 important that you answer the dang phone and get back to people as soon as you possibly can. One of my problems, one of my failures that I currently do is I usually take a day or two, even sometimes three days to get back to people. And that is not recommended at all. And that's why I'm in the process of hiring someone that can help me. Now the reason why I do that is just because I am completely tapped out in my business, running the business, doing YouTube videos, and I'm also fortunate enough to have a little bit of money, and I'm also fortunate enough to make income from other areas other than just the boat detailing when it comes to my video. So I make money from YouTube, I make money from product sales, I make money from detailing, I have my online courses. I, I, you know, I'm not just simply running a boat detailing business. So huge, huge, huge tip. If you are running a system like RainCheck, 
which I have a link down below if you want to try our system. I'm, I'm, we're, I'm in the process of developing and packaging this so that you detailers can use it out there. If you want to check it out, you can down below. There's a link, ring check, check it out. It will change your business, I promise you. But if you don't have a system like this and you're just having people call your phone number or you're emailing, the number one thing that you can do is answer that phone every single time because if you miss that phone call, there's a high chance that that person's gonna call someone else and they're gonna answer the phone and book that job. If you're a new detailer, the second, the minute, the second someone calls you, emails you, texts you, get back to them as soon as you possibly can, that's how you're ultimately gonna book your jobs. Just by answering the phone, you will book a ton of work because 99% of people out there that are super busy, like myself, may not answer the phone right away and may cannot get back to them right away. And if you're a new guy and you answer the phone and you're respectable and you tell them you can do a good job, just by simply answering the phone or getting back to people at a very timely manner, you'll book a lot of work. Hope that little tip helps you out. All right, so I just tried to call two more people back. No answer, that's totally fine. And unfortunately, that's how it goes sometimes. I've spent about 40, 30-ish minutes in my truck going through this, nothing. Okay, so that's fine. We got a bunch of emails. I did email one or two people too as well, just letting them know that we got their email and we'll get back to them. I'm gonna make another round of calls this afternoon. Right now it's about one o'clock. Let's go ahead outside with John. We're gonna help him get this thing washed and we're gonna start doing our little test spots and buff. I'm about five to six weeks out. It doesn't hurt my feelings if people don't get back to me today. Unfortunately, that's not a good habit to get into. You definitely want to be able to get back to people at a timely manner. So if you've called us and we haven't gotten back to you, I apologize. I'm working on my weaknesses. Let's go outside and get this boat cleaned up. Let's get it. So back here on these seats right here. Hey John, you wanna check this out? So right here you can see those like black, you see these black kind of spots right here? Anytime you see a seat with that, that means we're gonna have to use a little bleach on those. Gotcha. So when we use the bleach, we'll just do it real light, let it sit on there for a little, just like a, maybe a minute or two let it kind of eat off this black. We'll clean it again, do the super clean method after, and then after that we'll clean it with soap to just move all the scum. And then we just gotta make sure we protect it after. So, this boat was pretty dirty, huh? Yeah. I guess it wasn't too bad though. Whoa. So should I, uh, should I, uh, <laughs> gotta get your sea legs on this boat dock. Um, no, let's do the seats first. We'll get the seats cleaned up because we'll have to use a little bit of bleach just on the seats, really. And then we'll foam it out. So we'll clean the seats with bleach, do the super clean method to really clean the seats out. And then we're going to foam the whole boat front to back with the, uh, with the seat cushions. So anytime that we're doing the first initial wash of our detailing process, we get the seat cushions cleaned then because you don't want to really use any heavy cleaners on your seats after you do all the buffing on the interior of the boat. So in this case, like I just said, we're gonna go ahead and get the seats cleaned with a little bit of bleach because there is mold on these seats. Anytime you're using bleach on seats, you don't wanna mix it too hot, so you don't want it extremely, extremely strong because bleach will ruin the vinyl and it also will eat and ruin the stitching inside the seat cushion, so you just wanna be very careful. Bleach will not harm a seat if you use it one or two times, but if you're washing your boat all the time with bleach, it will be a matter of time before you destroy your seat. So anytime you're using bleach, just be extra careful. I, I typically always do from the bottom up so you don't really get those drip marks. But we'll just do a light, light mist. And then the bleach will actually start to clean by itself. So you really don't need abrasion. Do I need to super clean them again? Yeah, well after we let the bleach do its job. It's already doing it. See, it's yeah. the black starting to slowly disappear. I'll do that. Yeah, I tried to make a cool video and it was gonna be really cool but then the seats didn't get clean. Yeah, that's like bad. I did a video, like a quick video <laughs> of the super clean in the picture. It was actually pretty cool. Quick segment of the, the brush. It's nothing worse than trying to do a cool video and then when it we do the, come up. Yeah, when we do the last wipe, that's when I'll get it. <laughs> yeah, but look, you see all the black's already gone. Yeah. The bleach actually cleans in and out itself. So we'll let that sit. Maybe give it just a light um, Maybe get, do the blue brush. Actually, I'm sorry. Do the detail brush down here. So this little Mac Shine bad boy. 
and we'll just give it a nice little little rub just to agitate it i don't typically like to use the magic eraser with the bleach because that's just a lot of abrasion so get that off rinse it off and then we'll do the super clean uh, cleaning on it for me one of the things that i love about bow detailing is the views that you get you get to work out here on this beautiful canal i mean it doesn't really much get better than this the weather today is about maybe 70 degrees it's beautiful sunny i love i love a beautiful sunny day the last two days john what was my attitude like the last two days it was a uh, depressing <laughs> hard to deal with attitude <laughs> it was a, the sun's shining today we're smiling good. it was a sad depressing day uh it was nice and rainy and gloomy and oh man but uh when it's sunny and it's beautiful, that's when I usually make videos. I typically only make videos on days that I'm happy. So. <laughs> Let's get it. Yeah, it turned out a lot better. I thought you were just full of it, but uh, turns out it works. <laughs> so that's turns good. out I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have guessed? Who would have thought? <laughs> so right now, John's doing the super clean step on the seats. So we spray the super clean lightly, brush it in with the brush, and then a very light on the magic eraser don't go too heavy on the magic erasers you can hurt your seat cushions but we'll just go real light you don't have to go that slow john well you know <laughs> john's, it's all for john's being all cinematic with it <laughs> there you go it's beautiful when you're doing the seat cushions just make sure you do a really good job and get all around it so yeah I only start singing when I turn the camera off though. That's, that's the problem. Yeah. I don't think the world the world ain't ready for this voice. All right, so we're up here doing the seat cushions and John pointed out this tear. So up here, there was a tear in the seat cushion and you can see the powder coat right here starting to flake off. What I did when every time we get to a job, before we touch the boat, we get inside of it and we always take before photos. And I typically will go through and really look through the boat and any type of damage that's there before us, we take photos of it just to cover our back and to inform the customer of damage on their boat. So we did take a photo of this tear beforehand. So it's very important that you, especially new guys, before you start a boat, go inside of it and on the hull and take photos of pre-existing damage. One, so that you can inform your customers and two, just to have your back so that someone can't blame you on a ripped seat cushion. And I will say it's also in case you did break something, you can go back and be like, dang, I actually didn't get photos of that. That was damage that we occurred. Nice. <laughs> so, we, yeah, yeah. so we got the foam cannon. Like I said, it was broken. It was out, but it's back. And it's uh, way better than a bucket full of soap. So uh, yeah, it's Don Dish Soap filled up with water. You gotta fill the foam go. cannon up. Gotta it up. <laughs> Rookie move. <laughs> Make sure you put water in your foam cannon. <laughs> you got this, hold on. There you go. Your cup is runneth over. You gotta put these on just right. Yeah, don't mess up the threads. Cross thread. Should be good. Let's get it. The MTM foam cannon is great. I love the, the hardware of it. It's um, a really high quality, really good build, but the bottle on it broke within about, I don't know, two weeks. So I ended up going on Amazon, buying an $18 replacement bottle. So we'll see. I don't typically just write companies off if they have a mistake or something happens, but um, I was kind of disappointed with that bottle, especially with how expensive they are. But I actually just really like my Max Shine one. So even if this one um, still does good, we'll probably just stick with the Max Shine one. It's almost half the price, and uh, the tank on the Max Shine one is larger. So we're considering with our business because we're about to hire on some more people. I'm considering uh, having two full wash setups. So we're gonna have two foam can or i'm sorry yes two foam cannons two pressure washers 
so that one guy can be cleaning the bow of the boat or the front of the boat and then the other guy can be doing the back here in the stern and especially if we're doing sport fishers one person could be detailing and washing one side of the boat and the other crew can be doing the other side of the boat so i think that's going to make us a lot more efficient and especially once we get more people actually working on the boats because a lot of the times I'm actually making videos and I'm also in the truck answering calls, emailing people, doing all the admin work because right now I'm the administrator as well. So it's not very efficient on these boats when we have John doing most of the work currently. And I have another guy working right now but he's part time so we're getting there. Slow, slow, slow growing but that's the way to do it. Slow and uh what's the saying low and slow slow slowly but surely we're getting there so Dude, i just turned it on earlier and tried to hop in yeah. are you still recording me yeah this is beautiful That's i don't know if you guys heard but my hashtag soon will be buff daddy so <laughs> check it out it's, uh, it's uh, not a name you choose it's one that's given to you oh you know? buff daddy <laughs> you gotta earn that name <laughs> you gotta earn the name buff daddy <laughs> let's go All right, so John just finished up washing the boat. He went ahead and went on a little lunch break. And now I get to sit here and order some products from Max Shine. I'm going to be building out my, I'm gonna be building out my detail trailer that I talk, talked about earlier. So I reached out to Max Shine and I said, hey, I'm building out this trailer I need to get some racks for the trailer. So they actually reached out to me on Instagram and they were just like, hey man, fill up a cart, we'll send it out to you. Thank you so much, MacShine. MacShine has honestly been one of the best companies to work with. They are always down to hook me up with the products that we need and they're great at fulfilling the product. So anytime you guys buy from them and buy and they ship it out to you guys, I've had really good feedback from them. I've had some people reach out to me and go, hey man, my battery doesn't work on this mini or my, my dual action polisher broke. And every single time I tell them, hey, just reach out to Max Shine, they'll take care of you. And most of the time they get right back to me and go, hey, they actually sent me out a new battery. Hey, they actually replaced my machine. Their warranty has been amazing. Max Shine has been great to work with. So thank you so much, Max Shine. So what I'm gonna do is while he's on a lunch break and we have a little bit of a lunch break, I am going to make a Max Shine order, but let's go ahead and take a phone call real quick. All right, so I gotta get this stuff ordered from Max Shine. So I'm gonna go to MaxShineUSA.com. I'm gonna go to MaxShineUSA.com and I need to get some accessories for my trailer. So let's snag these real quick. Let's see. Bottle rack holder. I need two of these. All right, let's see. I need, let's do 34 ounce. I'm gonna get a pad holder, so we'll get, let's see, mini. All right, done. Ordered the products, sent them over to Max Shine. Uh, John is back from the lunch break. We got the boat washed up. Let's go make sure it's dry, and then we gotta do some test spots so we know exactly what correction spots we're gonna do. Now, this boat is our Buff and Shine package. They're not paying for our full revival package, which is basically everything the boat needs to be fully corrected. So we're gonna go make sure before we move on with the package, or the correction side at least, we're gonna make sure that the one step compound is actually going to remove ox all the oxidation because the boat was a little bit more oxidized than I initially thought. So let's go ahead and hop to the test spot. All right, so we got here basically all of our stuff. Keep all my pads in these rigid boxes. Some of these are dirty, we still gotta clean out, but. Use this backing plate. 
Now we already booked this boat. If you're doing a test spot on your quote, which I did not do because I just came out and um, looked at the boat quickly and gave him a quote over the phone. So we're actually doing our first test spot now. All right, so for this test spot, I'm just gonna pick a section, which, so anytime you're doing a test spot on a boat, you always wanna make sure you pick kind of the worst spot of the boat. That way you don't wanna try it on a nice side. So like on this other side, it's under shade all day. So it doesn't make sense to do it over there. We're gonna do it back here. And if you can see right here, it's really, really chalky and really dull. So I'm gonna come through here with our mixture. So what we do on our Buff and Shine package, we actually mix the, he the Shine Supply Heavy Cut and the Shine Supply Chop Top in one squeeze bottle, which is right here. We mix it 50-50 on the white wool pad, and that's gonna help us get that cut, but it's also gonna help it be a diminishing abrasive compound. Whoa, snap a lapping. <clears throat> snap a lapping. Oh, snap a lapping. That looks pretty dang good, dude. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the, the, the boat. Got a little bit of swirls in there. Where's the rubbing alcohol? It's been a long day. Drink needs alcohol. No, kidding. Let's back. go. Let's, let's get off. I don't drink anymore, homie. Well, rubbing alcohol. Is it still filming? Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. You can throw that in there. For the record, I quit drinking alcohol this year. So, oh boy. so far, it's been a nightmare. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what I'm doing here is a little trick. On your test spot, take a little bit of rubbing alcohol. You can go to Walmart and get these super cheap. I rub it down with rubbing alcohol because the compounds have lubricants in them and it, it sometimes will give you a false shine. So you just take a little bit of rubbing alcohol, rub your test spot section you can also use denatured alcohol and we're just going to check it to make sure any oxidation comes back. If oxidation or cloudiness comes back right now, you know that you did not fully remove it. And as of right now, it looks incredible to me. So we're good. Now I'm going to finish up my test spot by coming back over this with our shine supply wake up. Cause I'm stuck in the truck, around with a plug. All right. Are you filming? Yeah. Praise God. Have to get that music in there. That music you got me singing? Yeah. I sing to stop myself from going crazy, you know? All right. So we're using a brand new pad, which you do not absolutely have to do. We're going to take our Wake Up. Wake Up is a ceramic cleaner wax. So the way we've been doing our Buff and Shine packages, because it is one of our economical packages, we get the, we get the oxidation off. We polish it with this, we let it sit and cure on the surface, and then we top it with an SiO2 spray. So, I'm gonna come through here, try not to die in the process. Now this is just our test spot, so we're gonna go ahead and wipe it right off. Mainly because I'm trying to see if the abrasion's working. Um, in the main process, we're actually gonna leave the wake up on the surface afterwards to let it cure to the surface, because it is a sealant. It'll cure to the surface. All right, let's wipe it now, check it out. That's how he films on his phone when he's filming. <laughs> Don't give people my secrets away. Just this uh this buff and shine package this isn't necessarily our perfection detailed i've formulated this package for the customer that just wants that yearly buff and maintenance not everybody wants perfection i would prefer to do a perfect perfect swirl free perfect everything but not everybody wants that so the way we come through is we'll give it a, a nice buff remove that oxidation 
give it a good sealer. And this is something that you'll probably want to do once a year to your boat. We're officially done with the test spot. Now we're just get to buffing. I typically like to start off on the inside and get that done first because you're going to have cords coming in and out of the boat and cords are going to be rubbing on the, on the side. So yeah, let's go ahead and start on the inside on this, on this non-skid all up here. We'll just give this a good buff too, get all this buffed out. We got to be careful getting under this metal. Our pad should be able to fit under there. Okay. Are we um, going to buff the actual mount skid? Like yeah. Yeah. We'll just get this. In. We're not going to do the floors because it's that mat matting back down. Cool. But all this non skid up here, we'll give it a good buff, hit it with the polish. It'll brighten it all up. But um, on the inside, before we get on this inner edge on the inside, we'll need to tape all this up so that we don't do that. But we'll, we're tape this yeah, we'll just we'll wait on that tomorrow. Okay. So what are we doing today? We're doing just the trim, just underneath. Yeah, yeah, because I don't want to leave. Anytime you put tape on the actual seat, you don't want to leave it overnight because the morning dew will get the tape wet, and then it's a freaking pain in the butt to take off. So anytime we have to tape the seat cushions, you always, always want to make sure you remove it before the end, the end of the day. So there's no point in taping it right now just for an hour. So Should I I'll, use a little polisher in there or the big white wool? No, we'll do all the big, all the big white wool all on the inside. So Guess I need a drawing towel. Yeah. Let's start doing the bottom, like just this bottom area, and then we'll wait on doing this top part once we uh, once we get here tomorrow. And then tomorrow, man, we'll just be all day buffing. So we could probably get most of the buffing done tomorrow. Sounds great. <laughs> Sounds great. We have far too much fun at work. This isn't how every day is, though, huh? This video is not going to be fair because it's like a day in the life, but this is actually a super chill day in the life. <laughs> Maybe I'll name it that super chill day in the life. Should have that last boat, man. That was a day in the life. That was a day in the life. You know what I'm talking about? That's All the stuff that. you don't want to put on camera, though. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> How good the boat turned out, given the circumstances. Yeah. It actually, the boat, the boat that we're talking about, it's not so much that it was, it was actually a really good job. The customer was great. Boat was great. But it was just rainy overcasty we were working in a shipyard so there was rocks everywhere every time you got in and out of the boat it would be mud all on the inside how many times did we clean that flooring on that boat probably washed it I'm a, i don't know like how many 25 times, you, times. <laughs> we washed that flooring on that boat like 25 times and you could put drop cloths down and stuff but it was raining so it was like that was going to get wet it was just it was it was one of those boats so it was one of those boats where not it sorry it wasn't really the boat it was more of the circumstance of our weather conditions it's it was one of those days where you're like questioning your life decisions do so. i want to detail boats <laughs> do i want to detail boats the answer is no but we do it anyway because god bless us with this career right john yeah amen what's uh john what is one thing you've loved about detailing so far um, it's a good time, like, I, I, I don't know, I find it easy to clear my head, so life gets a little stressful, get out here, you run a buffer, you got your headphones in, just kind of lose yourself, it's been nice. Yeah, boat detailing's great for people with, like, ADHD or addictions. Uh, a lot of people in the boat detailing world have, like, ADHD because it's actually very therapeutic to come buff, especially in the buff, you would, you think the buffing process is probably more therapeutic, huh? <clears throat> that was, uh, Jake, uh, Dre Jake's, that was Drake's way of telling you I have ADHD. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> and, and past addiction issues, so. <laughs> Don't we we're, we're sober now, so, <laughs> praise the Lord. We're sober now. We are sober now. Praise God. Man, let's buff it. Buff it. Yeah, man. All right, we're gonna uh, dry this boat, and we're gonna start buffing the interior walls, along with the tape thing. Don't do that. Don't leave tape on the seats. It's a pain in the butt to get off, and it could possibly actually ruin the seat. So, we're gonna just get about an hour and a half of buffing in, and then we're probably gonna call it a day. And then I gotta make some phone calls. Let's go ahead and just bang these interior walls, and then start there. And honestly, this will probably take you a good hour to do correctly. And then if we can, let's get under there pretty good. Uh, under under this wall. Just under where the speaker is, that whole wall yeah, here. But like I said, I'm you just... i to try to get this right here. Yeah, and then, yeah. Right. Yeah, so if we could bang this out, honestly, just kind of get this bowel area done um, today. That'd be great. So anytime you're putting your buffer down on the ground, on the dock, always, always keep it upright. 
I've seen people make plenty of mistakes. <laughs> Y'all will take photos and put it on social media with your buffer hanging on the dock like this sideways. Don't do that. Always make sure your buffer is standing upright if you put it on the ground. But preferably, probably don't put it on the ground. But we got a really nice clean dock out here today, so that's why we're going to do that. Oh, that's my buffer. What did you say? I said, uh, I'd rather run up through the back. But if you run through the front, that cord's going to be hanging over and in the way, and you want to wash these cords. Yeah. You wrap them up in that buffer, it is not, not fun. Yep. I've literally almost died from boat detailing, so. From having the cord wrapped around the neck. That's always fun. Also, you can check for, like, obstacles, too. Chains, other things. Hanging. <laughs> Tell them about that chain. Yeah, man. and a chain that was under the boat, hooked up to the trailer. And I wrapped the buffer up around it. That thing was spinning around. Uh, rookie mistake. I was not being cautious. So not only can you damage the boat, but you can hurt yourself. So That's right. You and your chain you're wearing, too. If yes, you got... once I start buffing, this goes away. Yeah. So, yeah. If you uh, if you're wearing necklaces or chains, long ladies with long hair, guys with long hair, guys with beards, anything that can get hooked in that buffer, you're gonna want to put away because it's gonna be a bad day if you get your hair or your beard ripped out. Came with the compound. This is like gonna be the most helpful tips video we've had yet. <laughs> Real tips. Our special blend. There's a lot of little tips you don't think about. I was thinking too, like first time I started running buffer, if you're like. Sometimes if you just change your direction, you feel like you're fighting it, you're going against it, just go the other way. That's it. It runs smooth. Go with the buffer. Let the buffer do the work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, you guys are all pros. Probably most people watching this know better than I do. <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, I don't know. That's what I'm learning. Yeah, but not too many people get to work with me, you know. Okay. He's very humble. <laughs> <laughs> I'm humble, I swear. Dude, I need a yellow towel, too. Drink some boat. All right, so right down here, it's a little tricky, so I'm gonna just put a little bit on there. All right. So there's a couple different ways you can do down here. Where here, you can buff like this, but then you're only putting that much cutting power on the actual surface. So what I'm gonna do is actually flip it the other way. It's where it gets wild. And now you'll let all the circumference of the pad do all the cutting. It's just like you were saying, don't let it fight you. So if you're here and I'm trying to pull this way, it's gonna kind of fight on me. If you flip it, now it's gonna go with the surface. Get what I'm saying? Yeah. Where you like this little corner. Now you get the whole And it's spinning into the boat, so it's gonna land. If you're doing it this way, it's spinning. So you can technically do the same thing, but it's gonna be fighting on you a lot more. Yeah. This way. It's so much more. Like I can run it one handed. pretty good so what we'll have to do is kind of get up into here a little bit better and then we'll take that little mini and get all around here but when you're getting around those speakers where's the you got the comp on these little interior walls instead of putting it directly on the pad you can just put it right on that So just by changing the angle of the polisher, it'll completely change the way it buffs out. You got it? For the, for the people. Out. It's been a beautiful day. <laughs> Look at that view. Look at that though. Sun coming in over the boats. Doesn't get much better than this. Yeah, it's not bad. 
We got some workouts to do. We got to go work out now. So uh, we're going to sign out. Go take care of our health. Yeah, how's that 75 hard challenge treating you? It's going. It's hard building that discipline. Uh, John likes his fast food. And this is uh, <laughs> just the reality of it. But this is day 24. No fast food. I'm actually down 100 pounds already. Um, well, Let's go. I was down 70 pounds when I started. 75 pounds when I started the challenge. But now I'm down a total of 100. So, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. You've lost 30 here. pounds already? Lost... Is my math wrong? Maybe 70. my math wrong. 75. I see 80. I've lost 90. 15 pounds since I started the challenge, <laughs> right. so my math was wrong. I was probably 85 pounds. Or I'm not a smart man, but. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you get the point. Anyway. Anyway, either way, you're doing great. Doing great. God's, God's good. Let's check this view out. So we actually did this boat about uh, four months ago, three months ago. I already have a video on this boat. You can check that out. All right, dude, I'm going to go... Get some emails done real quick, and then we'll wrap up. So, do you need help wrapping up? No, man, I got. Well, I just take this. I get the rest. So we're gonna start loading up for the day. We got a bunch of stuff here because we've been cleaning all day. No, yeah, we'll just load everything back up. So whenever we're loading up for the day, we're gonna take our pads off of the machines, put all of our machines back, all of our pads back. All this stuff we'll just leave lined up here. We'll just make it nice and neat. Should we keep that boat out so we can put this stuff in there? We don't have to worry about it. We're gonna put that not like that. Rookie mistake, we'll have to rinse that off. Anytime you put your brush face down on the ground, I typically rinse it off, but try not to do that. Did I put it face down? Yeah, this is a rookie mistake. It's all good. It honestly could have been me. <laughs> Drake did it. No, I did it. Is there a key to that boat out? I don't know. It looks like the door's open. Compounds. When we get here tomorrow, we're gonna start busting it really hard on the top side and the hull. Hopefully get most of the buffing done tomorrow. And then the following day after that, we'll have to just wash and get this thing all waxed up. So I believe on this one, we'll probably do a coat of Jeskar Power Lock because it's actually coming out really good, even from our test spot. And that is sometimes normal that your plans may change even after you do a test spot. So be prepared for that guys. Like if you do a test spot and you get the plan and then halfway through the boat, you're like, hey, you know, it's actually coming out a little bit easier than we thought. So let's go the extra mile. One of the things that I really like to do is just go the extra mile, do, do the best job you possibly can. So some of this boat is more oxidized than the other, mostly your sun side. So this boat's under the lift, the back and this side of the boat is way worse than the front and this side of the boat and the inside. So the whole boat isn't evenly oxidized. So what we're gonna have to do is probably do a little bit more work in the oxidized areas, a little less work in the non-oxidized area, like really inside this boat, give it a nice buff and then we'll wax it up and call it a day. This boat will be another boat in the books. Um, you know, it's a pretty well paying job. Our, our buff in a shine package is $85 a foot. So we'll come through top to bottom, one step compound, polish, and we'll seal it up with Jeskar Power Lock and then top it with clutch. That's something I've been doing lately. I've kind of moved a little bit away from the punch it. And the reasoning is, is the color, the bright pink has uh, stained a few boats. It's not a big thing, but the dye in the color has stained a few boats. But I also rather clutch because clutch can go over your navigation screens. It can even go on your seat cushions. It'll make all the 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 uh, vinyl on your dash. So like up here, we got a little bit of vinyl on the dash. It'll make that vinyl really rich. So it's just one product that'll do it all versus punch it and clutch. You need two different products. So overall, good day. It was a super chill day. Not every day is as chill as today, but today was one of the days where we're just gonna hang out make a cool little video detail this boat um, or at least start this boat which was really our main goal for today was just to get it washed and prepped so that we can come tomorrow and hit it it's been a crazy couple weeks but we're staying blessed the business is growing we're like i said about five weeks out unfortunately none of my customers called me back today we made about seven phone calls today and got voicemails on all of them <laughs> so that's how it goes sometimes but um, it's okay. We'll uh, we'll start answering that phone again and getting it up. So.
Oh, anyway, John's going to finish wrapping up for the day. Yeah, keep your guys' eyes open for the new Buff Daddy package that will be coming out soon. <laughs> Buff and, Daddy uh, package. We're going to make John wear a Speedo, so. <laughs> Classic. Oh, man. That'll be fun. All right, guys, say, say goodbye to John. Guys, if you got any value out of today, if today was any type of value <laughs> to you at all, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell notification so that every time we make a video, it will pop up. And I don't really think we talked about a lot of products today, but I'll have some linked down below. Follow John on Instagram. I'm sure he'll like that. And uh, hit the like button, comment, and we'll see you guys on our next video. The next one will be probably a little bit more professional. Today we're in ultra chill mode. Let's go.